All right, so ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kay Sam. Thank you so much to this episode of Sony Acid Pro 7. Today is the second video that I'm posting about this in which I am going to show you some of the major features that you should see here after installing. In the previous one, I showed you how to install this step by step. And of course, if you still don't know, I'm going to put a link in the description of this video so you can go back and watch. Now here I'm going to show you of course the major features, not all, because not all of them are very useful at this step, but I'll only show you some of them that you need. Actually the rest you will also see them in the other episodes. Before we even get started, please if you are watching for the first time or if you've been watching and you didn't subscribe, please kindly do it and then click on that small bell of notifications. This helps support the channel and of course it keeps you updated each time I upload a new video. Without so much talking. Let's look at what brought us here. Now, as you can see, we have this panel up here, which is saying file, edit, view, insert, tools, and stuff like that. This is a very usual thing that you will always see in any other software. And then there is also this tab down here, which has features like new, open, save, and the rest. Now, let's go step by step. We also have some of these things that you're seeing down here. I'm going to start from up and then get right there so let's look at file now the, the thing that you're seeing here some of the things that you see here are not very new things if you want to create a new project you can simply come to new or control n on your keyboard command n for mac here it will bring you so you can name your project give it a title talk about the artist who's the engineer and of course after that you're going to say okay all right Next up, we also see open. Maybe you've been working on some projects and you want to open and continue editing. You can simply come here or you can say Control O, right? It will bring you to the folder where some of your projects are. You can then uh, open them from here and then start working right away. I don't need that, so I'm going to just open a new file instead. I'll just give it any random name and then press OK. So here we are. Next up, you see things like Save As. Right, save as here, for example, is when you open a project that was previously saved, this is how relevant it can become. You want to save it this time with another name and then keep another copy somewhere else. You can then come here after working on your project. Still here, you can choose a directory. Maybe you want it on your desktop and then save it with another name. Now, this is going to be still an ACID project. Even if you don't choose another location, still, you can just give it a different name and then save. That is basically what that means. And then you have other features like extract, real-time render, and stuff like that. We shall look at some of them later as we dive in, just for the interest of time. Then we come to edit here. These are also very usual things. Undo, redo. Those are the stuff that you already know. Cut, copy, paste, delete. All right. Some of them are already here. We shall still touch on them as we come down. Somewhere that I really want to talk about a little bit deeper is View. So now here, View has some of the tabs, some of the panels that you are seeing down here. Like for example, this is Explorer. You can actually uh, see I'm in Explorer. There's also something like Chopper. There's something like Media Manager. So Explorer, for example, is open right now. So if you want to close it, you can come to View and then just tick it off, right? will go off you can see it has also disappeared from within down here so if you want to bring it back just get back to view and then check it back so anything that you want to add down here below among these other panels just come to view and then for example like plugin manager like that so you have the plugin manager which is currently open it is already added over here uh, you can also just simply close it by coming to this all right so you don't have plugin manager anywhere else that means you've also closed it from here that means you have simply unchecked it so you can bring it back like that and before I even go away from there i'm going to show you some of the other features that these panels have you can see here we just closed so this is for closing and then we have for minimizing and maximizing otherwise making it cover the whole place or making it small as it is right now so this is quite minimized so when you click here one more time it is going to be the only thing that takes up the whole place. Um, it takes a larger space, I mean, so we can bring it back. Um, the next thing that it has is you can also manually just drag and expand from here. What you have to do is 
come, bring with the, bring the cursor. If that symbol shows up like that, okay, there is a small white line in between these. So you can hold and then drag to expand or minimize it. You can do that to pretty much any any panel that you see over here. You can do that same thing to all these panels. So it is the same thing. All right. The next thing is you can also come to these uh, dots right here. I don't know how they are called. Uh, you can hold on them and then move away. Like you can undock this panel, have it elsewhere within your screen. If you're using any other monitor, like maybe three monitors or two, you can just take this to the next screen so you can access your files elsewhere. You can actually also rearrange them by bringing this and then snapping it down below. So it has just come over there. You have your file explorer right there. So you can just hold it one more time and then take it back to where it was before, just like that. Those are some of the features. Once again, you can switch between the panels right down here to go to the one you want. You can also add as more panels as possible by just coming to view like that. Next up, we have insert. Insert has these things like marker, region, time marker and stuff like that and then when you come here to tools you also see things like render to new track burn i don't normally use this personally maybe in a later time in other episodes which i'll talk about them next up you have things like options under here we have snapping there is enable or grid only uh, you can also do this by pressing f8 on your keyboard now snapping here basically means I understand you can see these lines here. Let me just hurry and drag any track, any song and just drop here for formality. I'm just going to cancel this for now. So you, you can see that we have uh, these lines. Okay. I'm just going to cut this clip real quick. I'm going to show you how to do that in a, in a minute. Let me just cut again right from here. So when I'm dragging this into a new track, for example, when I'm moving it around, we have these lines. So snapping means if you are moving and snapping is activated, if it is enabled, the clip is able to snap on the lines. This helps a lot when you are uh, doing your mix. It doesn't just have to come from anywhere. If you disable snapping by coming to options and then disable it like that, uh, it's not going to snap on the line. Your song is basically going to start from anywhere. If you're moving the clip, it is just going to be anywhere. Wherever you leave it, it's not going to snap on the line in any way. So when that is on, you can actually also activate it from here just by that. When you're moving your clip, it's going to snap on the grids. Just like that. And then there is grid spacing. These are marker rulers. Okay. And there are other other types of grid spacing here. I, I we shall talk about also in other episodes as we go on but this is basically what I personally prefer using right here so that is basically that if you want to find help you can also come down here and then you explore so some of the things that we have already talked about are here we have new project open a, an old project save then there is publishing to the server or searching for music from the web if you don't have enough music in your computer there is cut there is copy and then there is paste. There is undo or redo, which are these. And then there is snapping, which we've just talked about right in a minute. So you can also snap to ruler marks, to measures and stuff like that. We just saw them in a minute. Then there is auto cross fade. Now this is if you want to automatically cross fade a track that you've added here. Maybe if you have, uh, for example, cut some part of the song away, you can see it automatically cross fades this. Even if you just push this into the other track, it is automatically cross faded. I don't prefer it so much, so I like using it when it is turned off. All right, so next up here is something like envelopes. I don't personally prefer using some of those inline MIDI editing, nope. So what I really use here is uh, the pen tool, I mean the draw tool, so what this does is that it draws the currently selected sound clip into other tracks, for example, or along that same track. Wherever you want to draw, it is drawing that song of A22 Fire. We shall be using it a lot when we get deeper. Then there is a selection tool. 
which is this. So what this basically does is that it selects uh, some of the sound clips that you have. If you want to select them just at once, multiple clips, you can just come to this and then you, whatever, whatever you hold, sorry, once again, we're going to use the selection tool. So whatever you hold, whatever the line touches as you hold and drag the mouse is selected. Let me do that one more time. Uh, whatever this box is, you can see on top of my mouse, so I can hold and drag. So wherever the line touches is selected. You can see we've selected all these upper ones and we've left down this one. So we can basically just do anything to whatever we've selected. We can delete all of them at once. So let me just press Control Z to undo. That is a selection tool. Then there is uh, the paint tool. It actually paints also whatever is there that is selected. So we are painting this. We shall also see how to deal with it in the details later. Uh, it also has other options. You can paint to grid spacing. You can paint whole notes. More is coming. There is a erase tool to rub off what you have painted or whatever is on the tracks. Right. Most DJs and me personally also use it a lot for cutting off in between. It's like that cut effects that you always hear in between songs. So you can cut off uh, some of those sound notes in between measures and stuff like that. The rest of these, I don't actually use them, so I won't even bother talking about them for the interest of time. But first, we have these other features down here. This is the, uh, the project tempo. This is the speed of the whole project. Whatever song that you bring in is going to be matched to these, this BPM. Whatever song that you drop in should be matched to this using the bitmapper wizard. And then here you have the project time signature. Those are the four bits, the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and like that. So if you change it, some songs have one, two, three, one, two, three. You'll understand that a little bit more, maybe if you get into music production using other digital audio work sessions. Then we have the key. This is the key. What you should know is that all these apply to the whole project, not just a single song. You can't bring a song that has a time signature of three into a project of four beats in the signature. You can't do that. So basically then we have these other features like record. You can record the project and then you can loop the playback. There are others like play from start, play from just basically play, pause and stop. There is go to the start of the project and then go to the end. The rest I don't basically do deal with them. Mm, yeah, so that is basically it. So thank you so much for watching. It's been a lengthy one. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope it is helpful. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. And of course, if there's anything you want to add or remove from the video, then please leave it in the comments down below. I'll be there to answer even the questions you ask. Once again, share it with other people that might want to uh, watch this content. And of course, if you want to stay tuned, please subscribe and support my channel. Just click on that small bell after subscribing. My name is Kaysam. See you when you open the next video. Peace out.